Hey guys, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Aaron Nace of Flurn.com. I'm so excited to be broadcasting with you today. Uh, you're joining me from my home here in Chicago, and I'm so excited to be seeing all of you as well. So we've got a really fun day ahead of us. We're gonna be hanging out for the next two hours and we're gonna be creating a composite photo together completely from scratch. We're actually gonna be creating like a fantasy type landscape image. I'm so excited. We're gonna have an absolute blast. So if you haven't already done so, be sure to check in here in the chat window. I've just got my chat loaded up right next to me here so I can see everyone and we can interact and have a really good time throughout this broadcast. So before we get started in the broadcast, let's take a look and see who's in our chat. And we're gonna talk about our schedule coming up. We've got uh, Ashi Yunus. Hey, what's up? Ela, Eva, hello from Germany. Alok, yay, Erin Nace. Jennifer, what's up? How's it going? We've got Arifa. I'm your guru, Photoshop guru. Thank you so much. How sweet of you. How wonderful. Yusuf, hello. Claddy, what's up? Long time no see, Claddy. I hope you're doing well. Austin, whoa, cheers from the Philippines. Oh, I'm so excited to see you guys. This is so much fun. Jesus Ramirez, what's up, man? So good to see you. I was watching your and Claudie's uh, live broadcast the other night. You guys did a great job. So good to see you. Wishing all of you guys health and love. It's so nice to be able to connect with everyone online. Alberto, the Punisher is here. Alok, hey from Canada. Tim, hey, how you doing? So good to see you. Ruben from Belgium, awesome to see you guys. Lloyd Harris from Annapolis, Maryland. Wow, this is gonna be so exciting, guys. I'm actually really, really pumped about this image today because we are creating a fantasy composite completely from scratch. I wanna show you guys a little uh, preview here of the image itself. So you're gonna be able to see this image that we're gonna be creating completely from scratch. This is actually using Adobe stock as well. So if you guys want to create and follow along with this image, you'll be able to do so uh, by downloading all of these stock assets. So we're going to have an absolute blast today. I'm so, so excited. Now, before we get into Photoshop, let's go ahead and take a look at our schedule. We can see uh, what we've got coming up here. Uh, Earlier this morning, you guys saw the Be Creative on Mobile with Terry White, he did a great job. Our Photoshop Daily Challenge with Kathleen Martin. And I'm gonna be uh, taking a look later today at our Discord channel. So if you guys haven't already done so, be sure to join us on Discord where you can enter your submissions for the Daily Creative Challenge. We're gonna be taking a look at that here in just a minute. Uh, Voodoo Val joined us this morning with some uh, creature creative challenges. Uh, she does a really cool thing. It was like a little Dracula animation. I'm not sure if you saw that. Uh, the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Julia was uh, just before this. Uh, I'm Aaron Nace. You're joining me for today's Photoshop compositing session. And next we're gonna be uh, watching Jesse Showalter for Adobe XD Creative Challenge. Daily, cra daily creative challenge. And then we've got Paul Tranny on how to live stream. So super exciting, really, really great day ahead of us. So I'm into it. I'm excited. I think it's ready to start getting into Photoshop. After all, that's what we all are here to see. So let's go ahead. Uh, here in Photoshop, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my screen. Voodoo Val, Batcula, yeah, he is the knight. I love this little chat going on. Uh, by the way, I can see all of your chats right here on my screen. So we're gonna be hanging out for about two hours today. So anything you want to say to me, I've got my chat window open here. I've got my Photoshop window open here. So we're gonna be creating and chatting the whole time uh, during this. So it's a really great chance for me to connect with you and any questions that you have for me during this broadcast, anything about, um, you know, like process during during the composite image, uh, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to go over anything and uh, help you guys. Make sure you get the most out of Photoshop compositing. All right, super excited. All righty, well, let's go ahead here. Uh, we're gonna jump into Photoshop. There we are. 
All right, and as you can see, here is our image. Now, I've already made this image from start to finish. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead, let's go ahead and save this out and start completely over. So I wanted to give you guys a, a snapshot of what we're actually gonna be doing today. And uh, there you can see uh, our final image basically. Whoops, hit the wrong button. And let's go ahead and minimize this. So we're gonna just start completely from scratch. So we're using Adobe stock images for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna just double click on our background here. Okay, we're gonna go into our sample images and I've actually got a few different sample uh, JPEGs here and we've got an Adobe Illustrator. Everything here is from Adobe stock. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna shift click on all of these images here and we're gonna click on open. All right, Austin Full says it's 3 a.m. here and he's committed to staying awake. Now that is commitment. Hey, Howard Pinsky, what's up, man? I'm so excited to see you here as well. All right, now here in Photoshop, one of the images was an Illustrator uh, document. So we're just gonna open up uh, as a PDF. That'll be just fine here. So let's go ahead and hit open. It's gonna open up all of our sample images and we'll show you what we're gonna be doing with these. Now, sometimes here in uh, Photoshop, it can be a little bit overwhelming to see everything. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command minus just to zoom out. There we go on our images. Okay, so we're zooming out here so we can see everything that we're gonna be pulling together. And there we go. And then this will go ahead and just close that down. So we've got some birds, we've got a landscape, we've got clouds, we've got some rocks, we've got different types of rocks, and we got a city background. So we're gonna be bringing all of these different elements together to create that final image. And you might look at these and say, I, I have no idea how all this comes together because it, <laughs> it doesn't really look like it would all fit into the final image. And that's one of the things that I love about Photoshop compositing is that you can cut things out of the background, you can change the light, you can change the color, you can do so many wonderful things with Photoshop that allow you to take images that seemingly have nothing to do with each other and pull them together in order to create a realistic effect. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to be doing is going to our background image here, and we're gonna be creating the little ring slash planet that's kind of gonna be the focus of our image. And you're gonna be amazed. This is actually incredibly easy to do. We're gonna start with the elliptical marquee tool, believe it or not. So let's go ahead and grab the elliptical marquee tool. I'm gonna to just create an ellipse selection here and we're just gonna hold shift to make sure that it stays a circle. And we're gonna make it about this big. It, there's no real right or wrong here. <laughs> we're creating a fantasy type image. And I love that about fantasy images because there is no right or wrong. Okay, so we've made our elliptical selection here. Now what I'm gonna do is go to my adjustment layers and grab a solid fill adjustment layer. You can do that right up here through your menus. You can go to Med layer, down to new fill layer, and over to solid color. Okay, let's just hit okay there. And it really doesn't matter what color we choose to start with, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab like a bright yellow. Okay, that looks great. Now what I wanna do is delete a lot of this selection. I wanna, I wanna delete this so it kinda looks like we just have a little thin halo of maybe like a planet or a sun or something like that. So in order to just make a slight, like I basically wanna select this shape that I have and then shrink it just a little bit. So we're gonna hold Control or Command right here on the layer mask and click on the layer mask. Now what that does is basically just makes this shape into a selection. So now that it's selection, I can right click and I can go to transform selection. And I'm just gonna scale this down a tiny bit. So let's just, I'm gonna hold alt or option and just shrink it down a little bit. There we go, maybe even a little bit less. And then I'm gonna hit the down arrow a couple times. There we go. Let's make it even a little bit larger. I just want it to be just super, super subtle here. Now you can change this at any time. 
There we go. That looks really cool. So basically I made a selection of the circle. Okay. And then I made it a little bit smaller and I'm just bringing it down a little bit. So it's going to be thicker at the top and thinner on the bottom. Okay. So now we want to go ahead and hit enter. That's going to apply our selection. And then here on our layer mask, I'm going to hit shift delete and that's going to bring up our fill dialog. We're going to fill this with black. There we go. So here we have the makings of our shape. All right. Joyce England asks, what kind of drawing pad do you have there? This is a Wacom Intuos uh, Pro small tablet. It's uh, really nice. You have a pressure sensitive tablet here and I'm gonna be using this later. We're actually gonna be creating a custom brush in this tutorial out of clouds. It's gonna look like fog, which is super cool. So using a pressure sensitive tablet like this, it's not necessary when you work in Photoshop, but if you wanna have a little bit more control over your brush strokes, I highly recommend one. Um, I kind of like to say it's similar to like painting. You know, if you were painting, if you had a paintbrush, you could push harder or softer and create like thicker or thinner lines. You can do something very similar with one of these tablets. So this is just the Wacom Intuos Small. Uh, I believe they retail for about $200 or so. Um, I've had this one for years and years and years. And honestly, um, you literally I've used the same one for like six years. They keep coming out with new versions and they're also really good, but I'm like, it, it's fine. It's one of those things that kind of never goes bad. Um, so <laughs> you can just use it. And if you got, if you were here, you could see up close. It's like, <laughs> it's like got a dent right over here where I use my tablet so much. It's kind of funny. Okay. Now I personally love the small size here. I love the small size tablet. This is the easiest size for me to work from. Um, <laughs> Fazim says, you noticed a car outside. Yeah, I'm working from my house. Uh, for those of you guys who've watched Flurn before, you'll probably notice that I, you know, usually record out of a studio. Right now I'm at a house and I've got a, uh, a, a relatively busy street right here. So you might hear a couple cars, maybe some motorcycles, some people listening to music outside, but hey, that's the fun. We're all hanging out at home, right? So you guys get to see me in my actual house. Alrighty. So now that we have this circle here, it's looking really, really good. We're gonna go ahead and change the blending mode of this layer. So I'm gonna go from normal. We're gonna go down to color dodge. Now look at what happens when we change this to color dodge. It makes such a beautiful light for my images. So anytime I wanna create like an actual light source in my image, color dodge is the blending mode that I like to choose. So. Already we're off to a good start. Now let's go ahead and zoom in. And one tip that I like to give here is if you make a shape like this in Photoshop, like we just did with just our marquee tool, uh, the edges might be a little bit too hard. So it might not look very realistic. So let's click on our layer mask. We're gonna go to filter, blur, and over to a Gaussian blur. And we're just gonna give it a super subtle Gaussian blur, like 0.8 pixels is enough. Okay, and that's just gonna keep it, maybe one pixel. That's just gonna keep it from having such a, a sharp looking edge. Uh, and that's gonna make it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, now my goal here is to create a light source. And anytime that I create a light source in Photoshop, I like to do it over several different layers. So what we're gonna do is duplicate this layer. Just hit Control or Command J. Okay, now here on our layer mask, if I hold Alt or Option, I can take a look at my layer mask. This layer, I'm gonna give a blur, okay? So I wanted to kind of blur out. So we have our light source that's pretty well defined and then we wanted to kind of blur out in either direction. So let's go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. This one's just gonna get more of a blur. There we go. And you can see as I start to blur that out, look at that, it looks like we have another little bit of dimension to that glow. Fantastic, we're gonna do one more. So let's hit Control or Command J on that again, and I'm gonna give this a blur as well. So let's just give it a little bit more of a blur, and then I'm gonna do even one more. All right, and this is gonna get a blur too. We're gonna to go even farther. So anytime you're creating a light source or a shadow in Photoshop, check this out. So if we just have this one layer, doesn't really look that realistic, but as I continue to add more and more layers, 
you can see now we are starting to go get a little bit of that glow, which I love. I'm also gonna go in here and change some of these colors, right? And this just allows me to have different types of, uh, basically different types of effects in here. There we go. So with this color variation, it's not just this yellow color, we'll have some oranges and some reds as well. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer here as well. And I'm gonna give this one a nice red color. There we go, super bright. Okay, so we can see there. And then on my layer mask, I'm actually just gonna fill my layer mask with black temporarily. And then we're just gonna paint with white. I'm gonna just grab a regular soft edge brush here. Okay, and painting with white on my layer mask is just gonna allow me to create a little bit of a glow here. There we are. And what I wanna do here is like hand paint some areas around this. There we go, around this circle. And my goal here is to make it look a little bit less um, perfect. You know, I want it to look like clouds are kind of interrupting this and there we go. Bring a little bit in there. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and change our color just a little bit. I love these solid fill color layers. It took me a few years to really appreciate them, but they're so, so wonderful in Photoshop. Now, you can see here, my layer mask needs a little bit of work, so you just paint white or black on your layer mask, okay? And then this is gonna get a blur too. So we're gonna go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. There we go. And we just wanna blur it till it starts to look realistic. There we go, maybe a little bit less. Okay, so let's turn this off and on, and you can see, there we go, off and on. It's just giving it a little bit more of an effect, which I really like. All right, let's duplicate this base layer again. I'm gonna just fill this with black, and then we're gonna zoom right in. All right. Brian asks, could we add an outer glow? Most definitely. And we are gonna be using layer effects uh, throughout this uh, tutorial. There we go. Outer glows are really, really cool. The only thing, the reason I'm not using an outer glow is because I want a little bit more control and I want, to I want to create a lot of these layers. There we go. And you're gonna see as this goes on that we're also gonna be creating a cloud brush. In fact, we're gonna do that just next here. And that we're gonna have interacting with this, uh, with this sphere of light as well. All right, looking great. All right, let's just fade that in. Okay. So this is gonna make up basically the first part of our sphere. Now, all of these different layers, we're gonna shift click all of the layers and hit Control or Command G to group them together. Now what we're gonna do is click on our layer mask. So a layer mask is gonna allow me to hide all of these layers at the same time. And of course, we just need to hide this behind these rocks because we want it to look like it's coming from behind the rocks, right? There we go. So we're just hiding all of these at the same time. Fantastic. And I'm gonna bring a little bit of this glow back. Again, I'm not super concerned about trying to make everything perfect with one layer. I'm gonna be coming in and out and working with this. So as we see more and more, um, as I start to bring more of the image together, we're gonna always be able to go back in here and look at this, I can turn any of these layers off and on. I can change the colors of these if I want. I've got a lot of things that I can do to work with this image to make it look more realistic as we go along. So everything we're doing today is non-destructive. We're gonna be able to go make these changes at any time. Well, we're looking really good. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna start creating some fog and some clouds that's gonna help me actually interact this help this light interact with the scene a little bit more. So we're actually gonna be making a custom brush from a picture of clouds right now. So let's go ahead and open up our picture from clouds. We're gonna hit F for full screen. There we go. And let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Now, first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna grab a hue slash saturation adjustment layer. We're gonna to go to our blues. Let's go ahead and target these blues and I'm gonna bring the lightness all the way down. What we really want here 
is a large contrast between the clouds and the background. So my goal, I'm gonna basically try to make the clouds to like white and the background totally black. Like that's my goal. And then we're gonna turn that into a custom brush. So that looks pretty good. Next thing we're going to do is create a new layer here. And I'm just gonna paint with my brush tool. So we're gonna paint black with my brush tool. So just hit D for your default colors in Photoshop. And we're just gonna paint black right here on top of everything. Make sure you're at an opacity of 100%. And there we go. This is looking good. This is the only cloud that I need right here at the very top. I'm not, I'm not super concerned about everything else. I just need one cloud. Okay, looking good. Now, I just wanna make sure that that is completely black. So I'm gonna to go to my levels adjustment layer and we're just gonna bring up our black levels a little bit here and that's gonna crank this all the way to black. So now I feel very confident that it is gonna be black. Okay, fantastic. So we're looking good. And my goal here is to turn this cloud into a custom brush. And you guys are gonna love this. It's really, really cool. If you've ever wanted to make realistic fog or clouds in Photoshop, this is how you do it. You just literally grab a cloud like from a photograph and turn it into a brush. So the next thing I wanna do, we're just gonna create a new layer, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and make a stamp visible and then invert it, okay? You could also just go to an, an invert adjustment if you wanted to do this. Alrighty, so now that this is inverted, we have a dark cloud on a white background, okay? So dark cloud on a white background, you could do this with any shape. You could have a picture of your hand if you wanted to. As long as it was a dark hand on a light background, you could make that into a custom brush. Super easy to do. So next thing we want to do is create a rectangular marquee. And I just want to make a selection right around the area that we're going to turn into a brush. So I brought, brought in this entire large, uh, large image, but the only part of it that I'm actually going to be using is right here, this cloud. Okay. So let's go ahead, we're gonna to go to edit and then down to define brush preset. Define brush preset. And as you can see, it's just gonna say sampled brush and it looks like a cloud. So I'm just gonna call this cloud and hit okay. Good deal. So let's go ahead and get out of this image. We're gonna hit shift F to get out of full screen and I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay, fantastic. So for those of you guys who are curious on what we just did, uh, basically we took a photograph. Let's make this a little bit bigger. You can see we're doing compositing today. So I took this photograph of just a regular sky, made some adjustments to the sky. And I, what I wanted to do is basically cut out this cloud and turn that into the shape of a brush. Okay, so that's what we just did. And you can see that now my brush shape is actually that cloud. Like if I actually click a couple times on that image, you can see I'm able to paint with that cloud, which is a very, very cool technique. Alrighty, and thank you for all your questions coming in here in the chat. You've got some really great questions. And uh, if you guys need at any point in time, I'm more than happy to go over things because uh, we're gonna be doing quite a bit. All right. Um, I'm not sure what a double brush uh, technique or someone said they're seeing a, a double brush, but oh, that could be a screen capture. Thank you, Angela, for, for saying that. Yeah, that could just be a, a glitch with the screen capture. Yeah, I see it now in the broadcast, and don't worry if you're not seeing that because that it's a glitch with the broadcast, I'm, I'm sure, because I'm not seeing that as well. Okay, so now what we wanna do is get back to our original image and start using this cloud brush. All right. So uh, McNeil asks, why am I working in all these windows? Well, I have this first window open as my primary edit. Like this is the image that we're gonna be making. And I just wanted to show you all of the different images that we're gonna be pulling together to make our final composite. So uh, you can work in whatever workflow makes sense for you. Okay, so now that we have this brush, we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. And on a new layer, let's go ahead and scale our brush down a little bit and I'm just gonna switch my color to white. Now, as I start painting around with my brush, this is what it looks like. If I scroll, it just looks like basically this cloud is just repeating over and over and over again. 
And that it's not very useful at this point. This is not something that I can actually use to create clouds. So we're gonna go into our brush settings and in those brush settings, we're gonna define things like scattering and shape dynamics, and that's what's gonna allow us to create something that looks a lot more realistic. So let's go in and hit Controller Command A to select all, and then I'm just gonna hit on Delete. There we go, and that's just gonna clear it out. Okay, so we're gonna go to Window and down to Brush Settings. There we are. And here in our brush settings, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our shape dynamics. We're gonna turn size jitter all the way up. I'm gonna turn my angle jitter all the way up as well. Okay, we're gonna flip the X and the Y jitter. So now as I start to paint it, you can see it's definitely starting to look a little bit more, uh, a little bit more scattered. Okay, and looks like we're getting a little bit more control. So. And the next thing we're gonna do is turn on scattering, just a little bit of scattering. This is just gonna kind of put some clouds up and some clouds down. I'm gonna pop that on both axes. You really want this to be very, very uh, random, okay? A super, super random brush because clouds are super random. The next thing we're gonna do is turn on transfer and here where it says flow jitter, I'm gonna set that control to pen pressure. Now what that allows me to do, check this out. This is a kind of a big one is earlier someone asked about using a pressure sensitive tablet. If I press lightly now, I'm gonna have a low flow, which allows me to create this cloud texture. If I press hard, I'm gonna be creating clouds like this. So that's literally with one brush stroke, okay? So again, let's just go ahead and clear that out. So with one brush stroke here, there we go, we're starting off pretty light and I press, press heavier and there we go. So you can see that's one brush stroke, just makes it a lot more realistic when I don't press light. And I can kind of come in here and add detail if I want. Okay, now this brush is starting to look pretty good. So we're gonna save this out. I'm gonna go to my little menu item here and go to new brush preset. All right, I'm gonna call this final clouds. There we are. Now the cool thing about creating brushes, by the way, is you can use these with the eraser tool, you can use these with the clone stamp tool, you're not limited to just the brush tool. So just the one thing to keep in mind. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and grab a solid color fill layer. Let's go ahead, just grab a random color, it doesn't really matter at this point, and we're gonna set this to color dodge. Okay, so having this set to color dodge, you get an idea of how it's interacting with your image. And I love these solid color fill layers because you can just change the color at any time and really change your effect. So let's double click here. All right, we're gonna put this back maybe towards an orange and we're gonna get nice and dark. There we go. Something about there looks pretty good. Now don't worry about the color because you can change it at any time. And here on my layer mask, we're gonna start brushing in. There we go. All right, we just wanna invert our layer mask so it's all black to start with. All right. I'll zoom in, a couple people said it's uh, hard to see the details. Okay, so we'll go ahead and zoom in and now I'm gonna start painting with my brush tool. There we go. And you can see what I'm kinda of doing is like lighting up the clouds that are right behind this area. So if I turn this off and on, you can see I can kind of light those clouds up. I'm gonna just change my color a little bit here. Go a little bit more towards yellow. There we go. Fantastic. So I'm, gonna, I'm basically lighting these clouds and creating some cool lighting effects while I'm going along. I'm gonna do the same thing here. There we are. And all right. This is looking really good. So basically I'm just making my brush uh, larger and smaller. And that's what's allowing me to kind of fade this in. And we're gonna be using this brush a little bit more throughout this tutorial as well. So turning this off and on, you can see I'm basically just adding some light to my clouds. And I'm gonna zoom out so I can see how these clouds look you know, with the image as a whole. I don't wanna to be too far zoomed into this because it'll, it'll make it difficult for me to see the lighting on the image as a whole. Oftentimes when I'm doing 
large scale images like this, I find it's better to be zoomed out a little bit. Okay, fantastic. So now we're gonna go ahead and double click. I'm gonna take the saturation down a little bit. Let's just move this around here so I can choose the right color. And as you can see, check this out. I can simply move my color around here and I can change the color of the highlights in these clouds. So I can get something that really starts to fit well with this image. So there we go, there's the before and the after with that. Okay, looking really good. Now, the other thing that I wanna do is I wanna take this part of the image here, this part of the circle, and I wanna fade that out. I'm actually gonna do that with my cloud brush, okay? So just as an example of what we're gonna do, with my cloud brush, I'm basically just gonna paint here like this on my layer mask, okay? And it's gonna start to hide some of this circle, but it's gonna hide it in a way, there we go. It's gonna hide it in a way to where it looks like it's behind clouds. So we're just gonna go back to this original layer mask here, okay? And I'm gonna start hiding this, there we go. And it's gonna kind of look like it's going behind the clouds. All right, looking really, really good. Now with this, I'm gonna take the same, one of these layers from down below. We're gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the top. Let's go ahead and fill this layer mask with black. And then look at this, this cloud brush now is gonna make it look like it's being lit from behind. So you kind of lose the light. There we go. You kind of lose the light of this, uh, of this little ring here. That's looking cool. All right. You lose a little bit of the definition, but you still get the idea of it. Okay. And this isn't something you have to get right in your first pass. You can kind of go back and forth with it, with it. And, you know, basically we're just kind of painting light at this point. So there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. Pretty cool. I think that's looking really, really nice. So let's go ahead and turn that back off and on. So we're kind of changing from like a solid outline here. This is where we would say, hey, maybe this is in front of the, some clouds to a little bit more of a hazy outline. There we go. So that hazy outline, I'm now filling in those details and making, you know, doing my best to make that look uh, like it makes sense. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one down here. We can see this area down here that I added. Oh yeah, someone asked to see the mask alpha. Yep, you can hold alt or option to take a look at your mask at any time, by the way. So that's what the layer mask looks like for this layer that I just painted in there. And again, I did that with the cloud brush. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here with the cloud brush because it's giving me a lot of this really nice natural variation. There we go. And this type of variation is what's gonna help this effect look more realistic. Okay, we're gonna make another solid color fill layer. Set this to color dodge as well. All right, and then this is gonna come in like right here. So you can see having a little bit of color variation just makes things look a little bit more interesting and realistic. Uh, there we go. By the way, uh, Daniel asks, how do you switch brushes like that? You can just right click with your mouse or I have a pressure sensitive tablet and then go ahead and choose your brushes. There we go. So check this out. Having a little bit of another color in there just gives it like a, a little bit more interest and makes it look realistic because very few times in life are things just like one color, you know? Even if like you look at a candle, like the flame of a candle, uh, you, you can see that, you know, maybe it's bluish towards the bottom of the candle, then it turns kind of orange and then it turns white. So especially with light, things are oftentimes uh, a couple of different colors. And whenever I'm compositing or basically painting light, I like to uh, 
There we go. I like to try to mimic that as much as I can because I find I get a little bit more realistic results. There we go. All right, and if you do something and you don't like it, just uh, erase it away. <laughs> That's the magic of Photoshop. You can just uh, paint it black on your layer mask. All right, that's looking pretty cool. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a curves adjustment layer. There we go. We're gonna go to our red channel and bring up a little bit of reds. I'm gonna go to my blue channel and pull down our blues a little bit. Let's give us a little bit of green here as well. There we go. Okay, we're gonna invert, control command I to invert our layer mask. And then I'm just gonna paint like, I, I just want a relatively large glow around this light, uh, but we're gonna make it subtle. Okay, so I just kind of try to get the, a, you know, a basic approximation there we go, and then dial it in. So let's see here in our curves adjustment layer. Yeah, something like that this is a little bit better, a little bit too red. There we go. That's starting to look a little bit better. And we're just gonna bring our opacity down on that a little bit. So anytime I have an effect where I'm like, ah, oh, that's a little bit too much, uh, my, my go-to is just to lower the opacity of the effect and oftentimes you'll get a really nice sweet spot where it's gonna look more realistic. Okay, so let's go ahead and group all of those together. All right, and we're just gonna call this uh, planet slash sun. I don't, you know, uh, the light source back there. So pretty cool, right? Here's the before and the after. Uh, there is one more thing I forgot to do. I wanna actually make this visible in the, um, there we go, in the ocean as well. So I'm gonna just duplicate one of these layers. There we go. Actually, that looked pretty good. Sometimes you'll do something by accident and you're like, ooh, actually, that's that's great. I'll just leave that. All right, so let's duplicate that again. <laughs> I totally wasn't planning on doing that. Uh, but now we wanna just paint it visible here in the ocean a little bit, okay, to get a little bit of light reflection in the ocean. There we go. So this doesn't really look that great as of now, but we're not worried about it because we know we're using non-destructive editing and we can change it at any time. So one thing I wanna do is I wanna make this light right down here. I wanna make it only visible in the highlights of the ocean, like it's reflecting the light from the background. So let's go ahead and double click right here. There we go. We'll double click there. And I'm gonna hold Alt or Option right here where we see Blend If. There we go. And that's gonna allow me to make this disappear from the darker areas of the ocean. Check that out. Making it only appear in the light areas of the ocean. And that's what's gonna have a more realistic, there we go. Check that out. That's starting to look pretty good, right? Now we're having a little bit more realistic reflection, okay? The color isn't exactly right. So all we have to do is double click right here. Okay, and we just choose our color. So let's make it a little bit warmer, a little bit lighter. Doesn't have to be super strong here. You just want a hint of it. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's hit a, make this visible and invisible. All right, maybe a little bit less saturated there. Okay, and then if I need to do anything with my layer mask, I can just, you know, kind of fill this in there. All right. Eric said, I look so clean. Did you layer mask my facial hair? <laughs> I'm assuming you're talking about my face. I shaved it all off, man. Looking for a change every couple of years. You gotta change stuff up, right? We're all artists. Sometimes my face is the canvas. Sometimes <laughs> something else is the canvas. There we go. So I think this is looking pretty decent as far as like a completely generated uh, light source here. We can just turn this off and then back on. Really, really nice. So let's go ahead and get out of full screen here. We're just gonna make this a little bit smaller 
And I'm gonna go ahead and close this document here, the, uh, the clouds. Let's go ahead and close those, Control or Command W. There we are. And the next thing I want us to do is start pulling in some of my rocks. So this is another stock image here. Let's go ahead and grab my move tool and we're gonna click and drag from one image to another and hit F for full screen. Okay, so next we're going to just go ahead and make this a little smaller, Control or Command T. There we go, I have my original still open there and we're just gonna make this a little bit smaller and I wanna just kinda put this in a place, basically my goal here is to make it look like uh, these rocks are kind of coming off of the mountains, like the mountains are kind of disintegrating. So it's really nice to have a lower opacity when you're doing this. And there we go. And that looks pretty cool there. It's nice to have a lower opacity so you can kind of see how it interacts with your image as a whole. Okay. Now also, uh, our light source is kind of coming from the right hand side as you can see here. So we're gonna hit Control or Command T. I'm gonna right click and we're gonna flip this horizontally. There we are. Looking really, really good there. And then we're gonna bring our opacity all the way back up to 100%. Okay, now a lot of people are saying use multiply blending mode. And normally I would, but in this case, I actually wanna change the light values of these rocks as well. So we're gonna cut them out of the background. So we're gonna to go to select, I'm gonna go down to color range. We're just gonna select the white, okay, of the background. There we are. Let's hit okay. And then I'm gonna click on my layer mask. And we just hit control or command I to invert our layer mask. There we are. Uh, you just wanna make sure you get rid of your edges around any type of images like this. There we go. Sometimes they just show up. There we are. And then on my layer mask, I'm just gonna refine this a little bit. So let's just go to select and mask. I'm gonna shift the edge in a tiny bit. So let's bring up a tiny bit of feathering and contrast. There we go. I just wanna shift the edge because these rocks had a little bit of a white halo around them and that was not looking really good. So we just shift the edge in a little bit, hit okay. That looks pretty good. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is actually right click and go to apply layer mask because uh, we don't really need that layer mask anymore. And we're gonna be able to use this in several different layers. Okay, so what we wanna do next is, you know what, we're gonna make this a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna go ahead and make another one of these. So let's hit Control or Command J. We'll just keep that on there for, uh, for fun, basically. Okay. The next thing I need to do is match these rocks with this environment. And I've got a couple great tips for you here. The first thing that we're gonna do is match our light levels. So in order to match those light levels, I find it can be really helpful to make a black and white adjustment layer. And that just takes the light, that takes all the color value away. So now all I need to focus on is, is it too light or is it too dark? So I'm just looking at light levels for now. So just so everyone's following along, this black and white isn't staying on forever. It's literally just here to help me look at my light levels. And then I'm gonna take a look at my color levels in just a second. Okay, so now that I have my light levels as fairly obvious, I'm gonna grab a levels adjustment layer and clip this to the rocks. Okay, so the levels adjustment layer, we're gonna go ahead and click on my clipping mask icon here. So now check this out, any adjustment that I make with this level adjustment layer, Let's zoom in so you guys can see it. Any adjustment is only going to take place on the rocks. Okay, so what we wanna do is take our black point and make this a bit brighter. And we wanna take our white point and make it a bit darker, right? I'm trying to match the relative light levels and the relative contrast of my background, right? So in order to do that, I'm working with my input and my output levels. There we go. Okay, and we can see right about there, that's starting to look a lot more real. So if I just turn this off and on, you can see there's the before, we'll just zoom in here. There's the before and there's the after, right? It looks a lot more like my background. Now, it's in black and white, so when I turn black and white off, you're gonna see 
that my color doesn't match, okay? So my color doesn't match, that's not a big deal. What I'm gonna do is grab a hue saturation adjustment layer. Okay, we're gonna clip this as well. And I'm gonna click on colorize. And now I'm just gonna change my hue till the hue starts to match a little bit better. Okay, and we'll just change our saturation a little bit as well. So if your hue and your saturation are matching relatively well and your light levels are matching well, check it out. So there's the rocks before and there's the rocks after. So looks a lot better. <laughs> it starts to look like, uh, you know, real. I also wanna put a little bit of a blur in there. So we're just gonna go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And that's just gonna help it match the background a little bit better too. There we go, looking good. And now I can go in here just on a layer mask here and I can start to define what I want to be visible and what I don't want to be visible. Now, these large, there we go. Now I'm just using the same cloud brush actually. These large areas here, these big rocks, I want those to be visible, but some of these smaller ones I can kind of make invisible here. And in a few minutes, we're actually gonna make a custom rock brush There we are, that's looking pretty good. So the rest of it I'm gonna take care of uh, with my custom rock brush. Okay, so let's go ahead and group all those. I'm just gonna double click and I'm gonna call this rocks one. Now I'm gonna duplicate the entire rocks one group. Okay, and we're gonna go to my layer mask. Let's just move this over here. Okay, we're gonna go to my layer mask and I'm just gonna fill that with white. Big rock. <laughs> David, yeah. Okay, so let's just call this rocks too. And now I'm gonna decide, hey, where do I want these other rocks to come in? Like right about there is starting to look pretty cool, right? So now here on my layer mask, I just paint out some of this stuff. You know, I don't want it to look like just a duplicate of the stuff we had before, right? There we go. So that's starting to look pretty good too. All right. Now the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna create another layer on here, just a regular layer. We're gonna group it, or I'm gonna clip this rather. And then I'm gonna use my clone stamp tool with the same cloud brush. So I'm gonna just sample some of this here and start clone stamping it onto my other layer, okay? So you can see by by clone stamping some of this onto my other layer, I'm gonna be able to start to get some of this fog in here, things like this, all right? So getting some of this fog in here, and kind of have it, you know, cover up some of these rocks make it look like, you know, some of these are kind of coming from before, or sorry, in front, and some of them are gonna be coming from behind. I find that this is better than doing like a change of opacity. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna use my eraser tool is gonna to have the same brush here too. Cool, so turning this off and on, you can see I just started to integrate that a little bit better with everything that we've got going on. All right, we're gonna do one more rocks group. Let's go ahead and duplicate this again. I want something for the right hand side and check it out. We just fill this layer mask with white again. Okay, let's just delete that top layer there. And then we're gonna bring our entire rocks group just over here. All right, I'm gonna hit Control or Command T. We'll right click and flip, hit, flip horizontal. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I just want some like really kind of subtle stuff right up here. Okay, that looks good. So I'll just invert my layer mask. Really just the rest of it, I'm cool just like right here, you know? That's that's cool with me. Apologies, there's a 
siren outside of my building. I live like basically right next door to a hospital, um, which has actually proven to be pretty useful, but sometimes it's just means there's sirens outside. Okay, <laughs> new layer. And we're gonna use our clone stamp tool again with that same brush. There we are. There we go. Let's go ahead and paint that away. Super cool. Howard Pinsky, this edit rocks. <laughs> I love you, Howard. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. So we're looking great here. Now, anytime I do these atmospheric types of effects and whatnot, I, I want a little bit more scattering in here and I want, I want to have a little bit more control over that. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually create our own custom rock brush and that's gonna allow me to just do like light scattering of particles around. It's gonna help it make it look realistic and it's, it's gonna go from like dense rocks to, you know, right now we have like a dense cluster of rocks and then nothing. I want it to kind of fade out. So it goes dense, less dense, less, 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 and then just kind of fades out. So we can do that with a custom Photoshop brush. So we're just going to go ahead and get out of that document for now, looking really good. Okay, we're gonna hit Controller Command N for new, and we're gonna make this 500 by 500 pixels. Okay, so a 500 by 500 pixel, super, super simple. We're literally just gonna grab our lasso tool. Okay, lasso tool, and I'm gonna hold shift, and I'm just gonna make some of these little, little rocks here, okay? This is literally just like making, making round shapes, and I'm purposely having a bit of, um, like they're not perfectly round, right? They're supposed to be rocks. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is hit shift delete, and we're gonna fill that with black. There we go, and that's gonna be our scattering of rocks. So now we wanna go ahead and change this. Well, we basically wanna make this into a custom brush. So we're gonna to go to edit and down to define brush preset. All right. And just call this scattered rocks. So literally that's it. If you've ever wanted to make like scattered rocks or particles or things like that, make a custom brush because with your custom brush settings and all of the things we can do with scattering and shape dynamics, it can make really believable, cool, cool results. And creating a custom brush is as simple as having a white document, a couple black specks in this case, and then just go to edit and define brush, uh, define brush preset. So now we're gonna go back to this document, okay? Let's go ahead and create a new layer and I'm gonna hit B for my brush tool. Now we're gonna go ahead and define this brush together. So I'm just gonna make it red to start with. Okay, this is just so we can see what we're doing. So right now, if I just paint with this brush, this is what it looks like, okay? It's just a bunch of little dots, but again, it doesn't look like scattered rocks. It just looks like a bunch of little red dots. It's not gonna work. So we go to window and down to brush settings. Okay, we turn on our shape dynamics. Let's turn that size jitter all the way up. We're gonna turn our angle jitter all the way up. We're gonna flip the X and the Y jitter as well. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is add a little scattering on both axes there. And now check this out. Okay, same brush with a couple different settings. Look at that. We'll go ahead and up our scattering a little bit and increase our spacing a little bit. There we go. And now, as I start painting around, look at this. Look how cool this is, right? These really look like our scattered rocks. So, so cool. So now that I like this, we're gonna go ahead and make it a brush preset. So we have scattered rocks 01. And obviously I just painted with red there to show you guys what this is. But what we wanna do is grab our colors here. So look at this. I can just start clicking here. I can make my brush larger and smaller if I want to. Super easy. Just use open close brackets, just like anything else. Okay. And now I just pop, 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 pop a lop a lop. <laughs> That's the technical term for it. And check this out. We have all these scattered rocks. Look at that. Fantastic. We just turn that off and on 
and we have all those little rocks in there. I just give that layer a little bit of blur. There we go, filter, little Gaussian blur. Beautiful. And boom, we have all these little scattered rocks up there that are looking great. Now, that brush is well-defined. I'm gonna create a new layer and clip that. So option command G, <laughs> we just wanna go to my final clouds and then I'm gonna just grab some of these lighter colors and basically I want just some color variation with these rocks, right? Like I don't want them all to be, um, there we go. I don't want all my rocks to be like a, just a light color or that same dark color, right? I want some to be lighter, some to be darker. I want some to look like they're farther away and some to look like they're closer. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna put a new layer on the rocks three. And again, some of these I want to be farther away and some of these I want to be closer. So I'm just doing that with these clipping masks. I'm just basically making some of these lighter and some of them darker and that helps me create that, that effect. Great, so now we just group all of those, control or command G, and I just call this rocks. It's a pretty cool effect, right guys? So let's just turn these rocks off and back on. Boom, all right. We are looking great. I hope you guys are having a good time. I know I'm having a great time. Anytime I'm in Photoshop, this is my jam, so I'm having a great time. The next thing we're gonna do, look at this. We're just moving right along. See, we don't need this document anymore. Okay, we don't need this document anymore. Let's go ahead and bring these birds in. Super easy to do that. Let's just use our move tool. We'll click and drag, boom, some birds. Control or command T to transform because they're huge right now, way too big. There we are. Okay, let's hit enter there. It's just gonna take a second to do a big transform. And then same deal here. I just wanna go to select and then down to color range. We're gonna select this white color, okay? And we're just gonna pop a layer mask on it. I'm gonna invert that layer mask by hitting control or command I, and then we just wanna fill the edges with black on the layer mask to make sure it doesn't, uh, doesn't get visible. So a picture of some birds. This is actually Adobe Illustrator. Uh, this is <laughs> not even a picture of birds. This is just some, you know, render of birds rather. But we're gonna make them small and then they're gonna look realistic. All right, so let's go ahead and shrink these down a little bit there. Use my move tool. All right, and figure out, hey, where do we want these birds coming from? All right. They're gonna come from far away. So if it's far away, if these birds are far away, they need to get a blur on them and they need to get lighter in color, right? Because they should be in the fog. So let's go ahead and add a blur. We're gonna filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Okay, maybe a tiny bit more of a blur. Great, that looks good. Now I'm gonna create a new layer and clip this. We're gonna use this same fog brush and look at this, I'm gonna just paint on my fog brush. And some of these are gonna be more foggy. Some of these are gonna be less foggy. And it's what's gonna give us some depth here, right? All right, looking good. Let's go ahead and choose a little bit of a darker color for some of these up close. Cool, so check that out. So there's the before. It just looks like we have some dark birds there, they're all the same color. And there's the after. Not only did we blur this, uh, but we've also pulled some colors in from the background. There we go. Someone just asked how large this file is and that reminds me, it's a good time to save. <laughs> all right, there we go. So I'm gonna go just go ahead and save this out now. Um, some people ask what computer I'm using. Um, I'm actually using a Mac Pro computer, uh, and it's, uh, let's see, bup, 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 bup. Uh, I have 64 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it's a 3.5 gigahertz, six core Intel Xenon E5 processor. Um, just a, you know, just a heads up. It's a way overkill for just Photoshop, but 
uh, with Flurn, which is the company uh, that we teach Photoshop online, um, we run a server on this computer and I'm also running a live broadcast. So I just wanted to make sure I had the best computer possible, but you could do this on a laptop for sure. So just, uh, just a little heads up there. Okay, great. So we got our birds in there and we're looking good. So let's go ahead and pop out of this image real quick. There we go. We don't need our birds anymore. We're going to pull these rocks in there. So let's just use a move tool. Um, I haven't updated my operating system because I didn't want to do it because I'm doing this live broadcast. I got everything working and then it was like, update your operating system. And I'm like, no way, not in the chance that it could mess up my live broadcast. So I'll update after the live broadcast. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna cut out some more rocks. So let's just hit W for our magic wand tool. My birds are flying upside down, really? I think just some of them have wings that are going up and some of them have wings that are going down. Um, but if they were flying upside down, all you have to do is hit Control or Command T, right click and say flip vertical. There we go. They might be upside down, I don't know, it's hard to tell. <laughs> there we go. Let's go ahead and bring in these rocks. Now, you might look at these rocks and say, hey, those have nothing to do with this image, but we're gonna make them look like they do. Um, and Jerry asks if these images are available to download. These are all Adobe stock images. Yes, so they are all available on Adobe stock and I'm happy to provide the file names for this as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab a lasso tool and boop, we're just gonna lasso tool this out. Uh, we're not gonna use that one, so we'll just layer mask that out. Okay, I'm just gonna use my magic wand tool and then fill that with black on my layer mask. Okay, so anything that's just on a white background like that, super, super easy. Uh, and you can see, I, I just cut that out very, very simply. Okay, now let's go ahead and right click. I'm gonna apply this layer mask. There we go. We're gonna hit Control or Command T to transform. There we go, it looks like we had some scraggler pixels over there. Control or Command T to transform. And then this is gonna be like my little castle on the top of this rock. And I wanna make it a little bit taller. There we go. So you're gonna be my castle on the rock. This is like my, uh, my house. Um, I was talking with my partner, Katie, and she said it reminded her of the never ending story with the childlike empress. She said, oh, that's my house up there, the childlike empress house. If you guys are never ending story fans, I know we are. Uh, so we have this rock popping on the top of everything. Okay, it doesn't look real at all. It doesn't look like it belongs, but don't worry, we're gonna use the same technique that we used to match these other rocks. So let's make it black and white first. Okay, let's go ahead and group those and call them birds. This is going to be called tower. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and grab a levels adjustment layer and clip this. And then I wanna take my light levels and bring them down. Boop. Something like that looks pretty good. And then we wanna take our shadow levels and bring them up. Boop. Something like that looks pretty good. And then I just wanna get like a relatively good match here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be relatively, uh, relatively good. There we go. Okay, and now check it out. I'm gonna use this same clouds brush Okay, same clouds brush to fade in one set of rocks to another. Okay, I can even use it to, there we go, to layer mask, boop, 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 this other rock, and it's gonna make it look like it has a rock texture. All right, looking pretty good. Cool. Now what we're gonna do is right click, I'm gonna apply that layer mask and we're gonna give this a little bit of a blur. So let's just go to uh, filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. All right. Looking pretty good there. We're gonna hit okay and that looks fantastic. 
Look at this, so we have a little bit of a castle on the rocks. Now, it doesn't look that great now. Um, I mean, in black and white, it looks fine, but let's go ahead and turn our black and white layer off and take a look at uh, at this image in color. Michael Lissing says, you must add a luck dragon next. Oh, I wish I had a luck dragon to put in there. Boom, Falcor, come on, let's do this thing. <laughs> so this is looking pretty good in black and white, but again, in color, doesn't exactly work just yet. So I need to make a couple adjustments here. Alrighty. So what we're gonna do is grab a hue saturation adjustment layer. Bam. Hue saturation adjustment layer. We're gonna click on colorize. I'm gonna clip this. You can just hit option command G to clip that. And now we're just gonna color it to match these rocks. Okay. Now there's another cool thing that you can do here and uh, this is gonna help us out to match some color. Uh, sorry, Kevin asks, why do you use mask instead of cutting and deleting? Surely it'd save your image size. Um, well, I, I do use masks. I kind of use both depending on what I need. If I'm gonna, if I think I'm gonna need to go back to some of the original information in a layer, I'll use a mask so I can get it back. If I'm absolutely sure I don't need that information anymore, then I'm okay deleting it. Like for these rocks, for instance, what I did is I used a mask and then once I was happy with that mask, I applied the mask and that's basically the same thing as cutting something out and just deleting the rest of the information. Cool, good question. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we see the image looks pretty good in black and white and I've got a cool tip for you guys when it comes to matching color in Photoshop. So what we're gonna do is grab a solid color fill layer. You know how I'm a big fan of these. We're gonna go all the way to red and I'm gonna change this from normal to saturation. Okay, so changing this from normal to saturation. Now here's what my image looks like. Crazy, right? It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't look good at all. But what I've done is basically I've, I've taken the saturation of the entire image and I've brought it way more saturated. So the image is super, super saturated at this point. Now, the reason I do this, and I do this mostly for compositing, the reason that I do this, here, let me just pop in, um, there we go. The reason I do this is so I can see the changes in hue and they're a lot more obvious. So making everything really, really saturated. Now look how look how my little castle that I added here, it doesn't look at all like it has the same color as the rest of the background. Whereas the before, you look at this and you might think, oh, you know what? It's not exactly right, but when you add this layer, it, ex it exaggerates it and it makes it very obvious that it's not right. So what I know now is because it's so orange, it's not gonna really fit with the blue of the rest of the image. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn on, we're just gonna grab a hue saturation adjustment layer. Okay, boom, hue saturation adjustment layer. We're gonna clip this and I'm gonna click on colorize. Okay, so check this out. All I have to do is change my hue. There we go. I just change my hue until these start to match a little bit better. Look at that. And right about there, my hue starts to look a lot better, right? It starts to look like it makes sense. So keep in mind that this is in a very exaggerated version of my image. So if I turn off my exaggerated version of my image, it should look better, okay? But it still doesn't look perfect, okay? But here's the deal. In black and white, it looks pretty good. I think it could be a little bit lighter in the darks. There we go. Okay, so in black and white, it looks good. So that tells me that my light levels are actually okay, right? because it looks good in black and white. Now, when I super exaggerated the hue, it looks, or the saturation rather, it looks okay as well. But it still doesn't look perfect. 
And so that basically means I have only one element left. So when you think about compositing, the biggest thing we wanna match, we wanna match our color, right? And color is made up of light levels. So like, is it light or is it dark? We wanna match our hue. Hue is like red, green, and blue. And we wanna match saturation. And saturation is how much of that color is present. Okay, so we've already taken a look at this. There we go. And it looks good in my light levels. So that's good, okay? My hue looks good as well. So the only thing left is my saturation. So what I know now is my saturation is off and basically I only have one option. I need to make it more saturated or less saturated. And looking at this, it's pretty obvious that I need to make it less saturated. Awesome. So let's just take my saturation and start to drag this down a little bit. And there we go. We can see it starts to match much, much better with the rest of the image. I think it's looking really, really good. Now we do have some of this from the planet and the sun that's actually changing the hue there. So I wanna bring in some of these colors in there as well. Okay, but we can see how, look at this. This is the rock as we just brought it in straight out of, you know, just basically cut it out. Added that and it's already looking a lot better. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these layers that we used for the light, okay? We're gonna duplicate this. All right, let's go ahead and bring it up there and I'm gonna make it only visible where the tower is visible. There we are. And now we're just gonna paint on it again with this same brush, okay? And this is gonna help me just bring some of the color. There we go. It's gonna help me bring some of the color of that light back onto the tower. Subtly, I just wanna do it subtly. That's awesome. Now, here's some other cool tips you can do. You can create a new layer and use your clone stamp tool. So I'm gonna use my clone stamp tool to start clone stamping in some of the original rock over top of the castle. There we go. And that's gonna help with the transi transition there as well. And you just wanna make sure for this that you choose your sample to be current and below. So I'm sampling, the, um, sampling this layer and also the rock layer underneath it. And you can see that helps that transition looks, look a little bit more natural as well. Okay, so there we go. And then one more thing we're going to do is I'm just gonna grab my brush tool. Okay, we're gonna change my blending mode from normal to color. And I'm gonna start painting with a color blend mode on there as well. So if you have ever any trouble at all getting the right color onto something you composite, you can simply grab the colors of the layer underneath it and then start painting it in. All right, so check this out. Here's our tower. We're just gonna go ahead and turn all of this off. So this is just the tower. Let me refine the layer mask a little bit more because we have like a, a hard line down here. You really don't want that sort of thing. It just makes it a little bit more obvious. Okay. Beautiful. So we start off with our light levels. Then we worked on our color levels, added a little bit of color, brought in some of the, uh, the ground, and then we just finalized the color there. All right. I think this is looking pretty cool. So let's go ahead and save this out. And we're back onto our stock images. So we've used this stock image and we're good to go. So now we're back with our last stock image and this is a stock image of a city. And this is how we're going to make our image look a little bit more uh, like it's uh, uh, inhabited, basically. This tower uh, in the background there, I wanted to make it look like, you know, you could live there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these lights here, okay? We're gonna take some of the lights in this stock image and then I'm gonna actually apply them over top of these image. Uh, sorry, over top of this tower. Great, so let's go ahead and use our move tool. We're gonna click and drag from one image to another. 
All right, let's just make sure we're using a new layer here at the top. There we go. Click and drag from one image to another. And here we have our lights. All right, so we can go ahead and close that one out and hit F for full screen. Looking really good. Now, the next thing we wanna do is I wanna take this and also clip it to my tower. So really, I just want this to be visible just where my tower is. And now we can see I can move this layer anywhere I want and we're just gonna have these lights visible in the tower. Okay, now let's go ahead and unclip this for now and just lower our opacity so I can figure out about where these lights are and which ones I want visible. All right, so let's hit Control or Command T to transform and we're just gonna make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Uh, someone asked if you can clone from a different document. Yeah, you actually can clone from a different document. I personally have never used that feature that much. Um, I find it easier just copy and paste, but um, but yes, you can go into your clone source dialog and uh, clone from any document. You can even flip things vertically and horizontally if you want to do that too. Okay, cool, looking good. So now we have some lights over top of our tower. Let's go ahead and clip those, Option Command G again. We're gonna bring up our opacity. This looks pretty good. Now what I wanna do, let's go ahead and make them a little bit smaller actually, our, our lights. There we go, so let's just bring this right here and great. I don't want a lot of the lights on the bottom so much, I mostly just want them on the top. Uh, so what we're gonna do is change this blend mode from normal to screen. Okay, so anytime you want, let's say you want the dark part of your image invisible and the light part visible, you can use a screen blend mode and that does exactly this. So if I change this back to normal, you can see it's literally just the city lights. This is just some skyscrapers over top of some rocks here. Uh, if I change this from normal to screen, then just the light parts are showing through, okay? If you were to change this uh, to multiply, just the dark parts would show through. Okay, so we wanna go back to screen, but we see a little bit of an issue here. Um, because this is set to screen, all of the light parts are showing through, including some of the images here in the, uh, the background, like the parts of the tower that are relatively light. So what we're gonna do is hit Control or Command L for levels and levels will allow us to make our darks a little bit darker, okay? Now we can see as I make my darks darker, they're just disappearing, okay? And that's exactly what I want. My darks being darker makes them invisible because I'm on a screen blend mode. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let's hit okay. We're gonna add a layer mask to this and we're gonna paint with black on our layer mask, okay? just basically where we don't want these uh, want these lights to be. All right, so nothing really here on the bottom. I'm just gonna switch to just a normal soft edge brush. All right. There we go. Yeah, exactly. This is where the Attack of the Clones were made. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so uh, <laughs> bring it. I think that was one of the main driving forces behind my creativity growing up was, was watching the Star Wars films and all the behind the scenes and seeing how they did everything. It's still one of my favorite things to do. All right. So I'm just removing some of these, uh, some of these things from the outer edges that you know might not make sense if there's a rectangular window all the way to the edge. Now keep in mind, I'm also like super, super zoomed in. Uh, so when we zoom out to like a normal level, it's gonna look a lot more uh, like realistic, basically. Not that it doesn't right now, but it's, uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit funky. Uh, and we need to blur this just a little bit. Okay, so we're just gonna click on our layer. We'll go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur and just give it a little bit of a blur also. Cool, so let's go ahead and zoom out. Looking pretty good. I think 
some of these lights down here on the bottom, I still wanna make those invisible, so we'll just go ahead and mask that out. All right. <sighs> Nick says, I haven't made any smart objects. It's making you nervous. I know. I mean, I do use smart objects quite a bit, actually, in Photoshop. I, I love smart objects for, um, you know, for instance, like applying a blur. If you make a smart object first, uh, then you can change that blur at any time. Um, honestly, kind of the biggest reason I'm not using smartest ob smart objects right now is because a tiny Gaussian blur is really the only uh, filter that I'm, that I'm using throughout this tutorial. Um, and I'm using the same exact Gaussian blur on all of the elements, so they all match. And um, if I was using a lot of different types of filters or like different levels of blur on things, then I would most definitely be using smart objects. But um, I love smart objects and I, I think that, you know, it's a great habit to be in to, to use them whenever possible. Definitely. All right. Cool. I think that's looking pretty good. So we get to kind of pick and choose um, what we want level here. There we go, that one's a little bit too bright too. All right. And so from a, from a view like this, where we can see the image as a whole, you can see, there we go. You can see, you get the idea that it's like a city or a complex or something like that there in the background, um, but you can you can still see the overall um, you can still see the overall landscape of it, and I played around with this image originally. I was like, oh, maybe I'll put a a boat in the foreground and put like a person on the boat, and I, I did a lot of different things. Um, but in the end, it just felt a little bit more. Um, I don't know. It, it just felt a little bit more unique to have like a landscape style composite. I, I really haven't done anything like this. Uh, you know, very much at all, to be honest. Um, but it's a lot of fun to create like a fantasy composite that doesn't involve people because a lot of my work have, you know, just about all of my images have people in them and it's a lot of fun, but I wanted to give myself an image, like a challenge to do something creative that didn't involve people as well. So um, yeah, I think we're looking really, really good. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and turn our tower off and on looking good. Now, we're gonna make another layer over top of that, and I want some of these clouds to look like they're going over top of the tower. So, what do we do in this case? Well, we grab our cloud brush. See how useful this cloud brush has become? There we go. I'm just gonna grab some of these clouds and start painting them over top of my tower. There we go. and down in here as well. So this is just, again, it's a regular brush. Okay, I'm actually gonna unclip this because it I want it to paint down here a little bit too. This is just a regular brush. There we go. And I'm just holding Alt or Option. There we go. And this is allowing me, fantastic. This is allowing me to just grab the colors of my background and paint that in there. Okay, now my blending mode here, I'm gonna change this from normal to lighten. It should just be clouds and I don't want them to like darken that uh, little tower at all. All right, this is so, so cool. I'm really loving all these comments coming in. You guys have got some great ideas. Someone says some X wings faded into the background, uh, <laughs> some rocks hitting the water. Really, really cool ideas. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. All right, well, we've got just a couple more minutes till our portfolio review. So we are gonna go ahead and do a, uh, <laughs> we're gonna add a, a couple little spires to the top of this thing. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here. Now with our spires, again, I'm gonna go with the same type of, uh, the same type of architecture here. So there we go. You know, kind of like not trying to make them 100% perfect. So this is just with a lasso tool. 
There we go. So basically I'm just making a selection to start with and then I'm gonna clone stamp this. So we're just gonna clone stamp from outside into the selection. We'll hit Control or Command H to hide. There we go. And literally just clone stamping from one area of this tower into another one. There we are. And we can change these too. I think they look pretty good, but we'll see. Okay, and then we want to do the same thing over here. So we'll just add a little tower. Um, I want like a spire on the top of these if anyone's curious, like what are you doing? There we go. All right, cool. And then that's just gonna get the exact same Gaussian blur that everything else gets. So it should look pretty, uh, pretty seamless there. Okay. Cool, uh, that one's a little bit too thick. So we're just gonna pop a layer mask on that. All right, there we go. And I'm still using that same cloud brush, believe it or not. I get brushes like this and I'm like, I'm gonna use it from everything. All right, still a little bit too wide. Let's go ahead and zoom in. We can make adjustments on this, we got plenty of time. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and save this out. Next thing we wanna do is make uh, some spires to go on the top of these. And we basically want to do this in the same principle that we did for the um, for the uh, for the light there, but we're gonna save that until after we do our current challenges. So we're gonna take a look at our current challenges now. I'm super excited to see them. So uh, if those of you guys who have not um, who haven't had the chance to do so, be sure you go on to Discord and you can take a look at our current challenges. Also, we're gonna take a look at, um, there we go, our daily creative challenge here. There we go, let's just pop this up. Sorry, there we go. Pop this up here in this window. Okay, so we can see here's our daily creative challenge here on Behance.net. So if you guys haven't done so, uh, you can go to Behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. I'm sure we're gonna link it up here in the chats. And here you can sign up for the Adobe Creative Challenge. So you've got all of your information right here. And uh, you're gonna see that these challenges are getting unlocked very shortly. So uh, we've got a, um, on April 14th, we've got a Creative Challenge um, oh, that's right, we are doing portfolio. Uh, I think we're do going through the Behance, uh, sorry, we're doing the current challenges uh, in Discord today. I'm pretty sure, help me out here on the, uh, on the live chat. Um, <laughs> help me out here on the live chat. I'm pretty sure we're going through the Discord uh, current challenges for the, uh, for the Photoshop uh, play at home. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go through those and we're gonna hear um, what we have here as well. There we go, let's go ahead and clear these. Perfect, uh, so if you haven't already done so, be sure to uh, join us here on Discord uh, where we're taking a look at the current challenges and uh, these were posted, oh, I got a message on Slack from Voodoo Val. Oh, we are doing portfolio reviews today. Oh, wonderful. Okay, thank you Val for sending me these images. All right, thank you everyone. You were right. Turns out you guys know what's up. Shouldn't surprise me. Of course you guys know what we're doing here. Okay, we are doing portfolio reviews. Let me just make me a little bit smaller here in the corner. Okay, there we go. All right, portfolio reviews. Fantastic. Thank you, Val, for linking me up today. Uh, I apologize, everyone, about the daily creative challenge. Turns out I'm 
thinking about tomorrow in my head, but we've got a portfolio review uh, right here. So I've got two portfolios uh, that Val was uh, nice enough to send over. Thank you so much, Voodoo Val. And we're taking a look at Austin Full and uh, Muhammad Masri as well. By the way, these are both on uh, Behance. So if you haven't already done so, I mean, a lot of you guys are watching this live broadcast right here on Behance.com slash live. Uh, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and upload your work to Behance. It's like the best platform, in my opinion, for not only showcasing your own work, but for discovering other creatives' work as well. And I know that I've had a lot of job opportunities come my way through Behance over the years with people looking for, uh, in my case, I do, you know, professional compositing, photography, retouching, that sort of thing. So, you know, browsing through portfolios, I've had a lot of, uh, I've had a lot of people contact me through Behance. So, um, if you haven't uploaded your portfolio on Behance, be sure to do so. All right. Well, we're looking really, really great here. So Austin Full looks like we have a lot of composite work, a lot of uh, sports work, some graphic design work, and uh, some logo, uh, some logo stuff as well. All in all, really, really cool. So let's take a couple, let's take a look at some of these, you know, up close here. So here we have a composite. Um, what I like about this image is you're matching your graphic style from one image to a different. So like this image here, obviously we have a a, uh, a portrait, here we have another portrait, and then here we have like a full body image, but I'm not distracted by everything, which is a good thing. Like this, a portrait in the background blends in really well here, and then we have selective coloring here in the foreground, which definitely draws my eye right to this area here in the foreground. So really, really nice composite work here. Um, I can see uh, this is, I guess, Rich Hamilton is the, um, there we go, is the text here in the foreground. I'm having just a tiny bit of trouble reading this. It, I like it. I think it's really, really cool and says RIP Rich Hamilton. Um, so I really like it. Um, I'm just having a tiny bit of trouble reading it right here, but that could be just me. Um, let's go through a couple of your other images. Super cool. Again, you're using selective coloring. Um, I really like your matching this yellow, like the yellowish orange here with the blue in the background. The contrast just gives it a little bit more pop and makes it, you know, not so monochromatic. Um, but I like what you're doing here with you know, basically we just have selective coloring going on. So, you know, your athlete is basically in black and white and then uh, the the jersey here is in color and then we have a little bit of a pop, um, this orange here. And then you've got a lot of really great textures on here, like this, you know, texture here in the background. We've got like dot patterns and, and things like that. It's making these images a lot more interesting than if they were just on a, you know, um, all white background. And it looks like here, You've also designed a custom logo uh, for this person with the K and the L being hand signs. I'm not sure if you designed that or not, if uh, if that was you know already done. Let's scroll down and see. Oh, here we have some more examples here, playing for the Toronto Raptors. Um, I'm, I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to basketball, so pardon me. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure who some of these people are, but... <laughs> <laughs> that just speaks to my own basketball ignorance. Um, but what I really like is the fact that we've got this hand logo here, and then you've got the handprint as a texture on this image as well. That's so cool. Uh, anytime you can match like textures with you know graphics and logos, and then I get the impression that this would be a handprint of of this of this person, even though it might not be exactly that person's handprint. That's the impression that I get, and I, I really dig that. It's a it's a super cool effect. All right, let's kind of take a look. Uh, a lot of this kind of same general principles here uh, we have with, uh, looks like a, an artist here as well. Um, yeah, all in all, I think this looks really, really good. I guess my only like slight critique here would be um, that we have like a, a a low polygon 
version of the subject. And I think she is really strong, especially with her red hair. Um, but then the microphone just kind of looks like a cutout image with a Gaussian blur on it. Um, but she doesn't have a Gaussian blur on her. So it's a little bit like, if you, if you were going for a depth of field thing, then that's super cool. But I would almost like to see it in the same resolution with the same type of treatment. Um, and then the cutout of her hat, um, again, this is probably done on purpose, on purpose to look like low poly. Um, but I, I don't know, I would probably prefer just like a smooth round cutout of a hat. But again, that it's a, it's an effect thing. So, um, obviously everyone is, um, you know, everyone has a different opinion and everyone has their own style and that's what makes us great as artists. So, um, keep in mind that anything that I say is just my opinion. It's, you know, like you guys are probably looking at my composite I'm doing today and you're probably like, oh, I would totally do that a little different. And that's wonderful. That's what makes us all unique artists. So um, I'm super happy and honored to be able to look through uh, your portfolio here, Austin, and, um, and, and be able to give my thoughts on it. So I, I very much appreciate that. And really cool logo. Um, I, I actually get the feeling from your logo. Like I feel like I know what type of work uh, you're, you're working with as well. It has like a very, like a, like a movement to it. And, um, the fact that you do a lot of sports work makes a lot of sense. It, I feel like this logo actually fits very well, uh, with, with the, uh, with the work that you're doing here as well. All right. Oh, and Austin, you're here in the chat. Oh, so good to, so good to talk to you. How wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us here in the chat as well. Okay. Wonderful. So our next image here is uh, Mohammed. Uh, I'm not sure if Mohammed is here in the chat as well, but I'm super honored to be able to look at uh, your images here as well, Mohammed. Let's go ahead and start up here. This is the for the stay at home challenge for um, our current circumstances. Uh, super cool. We've got a lot of different effects going on here. Uh, and okay, cool. So I see this is like your... Um, you know, basically like a, a public service message here. Uh, maybe your brain wants you to go out, but you have to keep your legs in your home. So yeah, I definitely get you there. I'm feeling the same thing you are. Very, very cool. I, I really like your use of textures and this um, this light here in the, uh, you know, in, in the foreground looks like a lens flare. It really gives the image a very cool effect. Um, let's take a look. We have some more uh, super cool. Again, a lot of use of texture here. Um, and textures can be relatively difficult to pull off, but I feel like you're doing it very well here. And here we have like a build up effect, um, which I appreciate as, uh, as a creator, I really like to see how other people are doing their work from start to finish. And I would say that, you know, if you can post any type of build ups like this, this looks like an animated GIF. Um, which I'll show you how to do that, by the way, at the end of today's broadcast, we're going to have a little bit of time. So if anyone's curious on how to create one of these, uh, wonderful buildups and put that on your Behance portfolio, I'll actually show you how to do that today. I wasn't really planning on it, but, uh, we have a little bit of time, so we'll be able to show you how to do that. Cool. All right. Here we have a, looks like a whale. Oh, of course we've got some birds composited in just like our photo today. Super cool. I think you did a really nice job matching the coloring and the light with the foreground. Um, and your logo integrates very well here with with this beautiful photograph. Uh, it looks like we have a video. I'll, I'll watch the video later. Um, and another super, super cool image. This actually reminds me of like a pure illustration. I'm not sure if this is a composite uh, with photos and illustrations. Um, but I really like what you've done here. I, I haven't really seen much like this, uh, where it looks like kind of the whole world is warping around and we have these different cactuses and some, some birds here. And it looks like we have a couple different, uh, <laughs> different references and then some Forrest Gump, uh, on the bottom, which I'm a big fan of Forrest Gump. So really, really cool. And then it looks like we have some strict digital painting here as well. And these look fantastic. Uh, nice job on these digital paintings. Um, I would say 
you know, I'm, I'm not a digital painter, but um, I love some of the texture work that you put in your other composites. Like these, you know, these images up here have so much texture to them. It'd be cool to see some of your digital paintings uh, with a little bit of texture on them as well. It's just to see what type of an, uh, of an effect those give. All right, and then here we have, again, a really, really beautiful uh, composite where it looks like a split, split earth. Um, again, I would say, you know, if I were to give any sort of subtle critique, it might be that, you know, we have a, a pretty blurred foreground here, which uh, definitely works. I might be compelled to extend this blur a little bit more. Like if you had a shallow depth of field with your photography, things close to the camera and things really far away would be out of focus depending on where your focal point is. I mean, if your focal point is at infinity, then that would be in focus, obviously. But um, because we do have this area so out of focus, it might be nice to have um, a little bit of a, a more gradual depth of field change in this image, but that's a super subtle thing. And I know that personally, I really struggle with adding elements to the foreground and doing blurs to them. Uh, it, it's very difficult to get that blur ratio right and make those things look realistic. So I tend to um, use less of a blur rather than more of a blur. And usually uh, that's worked out for me, but uh, fantastic job, super cool concept and uh, really, really wonderful images. So um, thank you so much for uh, submitting your images, everyone to be, uh, to, to be on today's live broadcast. Uh, I, I really had a great time viewing all of these portfolios. And yeah, again, if you haven't already done so, be sure to upload your images to Behance as well so we can check them out and maybe they'll be featured in, uh, featured in a future live broadcast. All right, well, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and get back into Photoshop here. There we go. And here in Photoshop, we've just got a couple things to do, but I think our image is looking great. We, we're gonna add a spire and then I wanna show you guys how to um, do a build up an animated GIF as well. So let's go ahead and grab our spire. Uh, I'm just gonna grab another solid color fill layer. There we go. Let's set this from normal down to color dodge. Okay, great. Controller command I on the layer mask for the color dodge. And then we're just gonna go in here and basically just boop, grab our polygonal lasso tool. All right, I'm gonna hold shift to make sure it goes straight up and down and then I'm gonna bring it in a tiny bit. There we go. And then I'm gonna fill that with white. So we're just using, there we go. Shift delete to fill that with white. Cause this is just selections on a layer mask, right? All right, there we go. Cool. So what we wanna do here is hit Control or Command J to duplicate this. And then we just wanna give this a blur. So let's go ahead and zoom out and give it a Gaussian blur. So it looks like we have some light kind of emanating from, from these little spires there. Okay, we're gonna do another one. And this time we're gonna change the color a little bit more orangey. Cause you know, I'm a big fan of having a few different colors in there. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead, the same brush we had here, we're gonna use the cloud brush to just add a little bit of, uh, there we go, a little bit more. And I'm even gonna do like a little bit of atmospherics around here to make it look like there are some clouds over here that are kind of being lit. All right, cool, I think this is looking pretty good. So let's just go back to the spire here. I'm gonna just take it down a little bit more. All right, and let's see how that looks coming out there. I think this, uh, this spire here, I just wanna make it a little bit taller. So we'll just go back to our polygonal lasso tool. There we go. That way we just have a little bit more separation between the three of them. So we have like a, a little bit of a hierarchy there. Why not? We'll make it taller. We're doing fantasy images today. 
The tallest spiral in the world. <laughs> there we go. Cool. And then, there we go. Just fade that out a little bit right there. Wow. Super, super cool. And there we have our tower. So we can just turn that off. Look at that, we just turned the whole thing off and back on. What a wonderful, wonderful, fun composite that we were able to do today in under two hours. Guys, I've had a fantastic job. Uh, <laughs> fantastic job. I do have a fantastic job. I get to play around in Photoshop for my whole life. It's really wonderful. Um, but I've had a fantastic time with you hanging out today. So um, our composite is looking great. We are done. Um, just like we talked in the portfolio review, I want to show you guys how to create up a build up effect because this is something super cool that you can use on Instagram, your you know portfolio on Behance, just a cool way to add a little bit more interest to your work and show people the build up effect. So let's go ahead and get into it. It's actually very, very easy to do. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back down all the way to the base layer, okay? So all the way to the base layer, what we're gonna do is create a new layer. I'm gonna go to image and then down to apply image. There we go, apply image, layer is gonna be set to merged, okay? And we're gonna go back to our blending mode is that that's gonna be set to normal. And you can also hit shift option command E, okay? All right, we're gonna do this nice and quick. So. Basically, we're gonna bring that in. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring every step that you wanna make. Basically, all you have to do is make layers visible and invisible, create a new layer, and then make a stamp visible, which you can do by hitting image and then down to apply image. So like these rocks, for instance, I wanna show that these rocks weren't exactly, uh, they, 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 they didn't exactly fit when we started. So I'm gonna make that a step as well, right? Because that's like pretty cool. So let's create a new layer and then merge that together, okay? And then I'm gonna turn all these clipping masks back on. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Let's just go back to rocks one. Turn that on there too. All right. Bring this all the way up to the top. New layer and a stamp visible, okay? Great. Our birds, we're just gonna put those right in there. And then our tower, I'm gonna just bring this in just like that. Again, because I wanna show the different steps that we got to to bring our tower together. All right, so we're gonna use the matching step. So you can see, I'm basically just creating stamp visible layers on top of everything. Boom, and there we go. So now, check this out. I have these stamp visible layers on top of everything. I'm gonna shift click all of these layers. We're gonna right click, and I'm gonna go to duplicate layers, dot, dot, dot. I'm gonna just put this in a new document, and then I'm gonna change the size of the document. We'll just make this uh, pixels. I'll make this 1200 pixels, just because the original was kind of large, and I didn't really necessarily wanna make uh, an animation from that. So now we have each of these layers here ready to go. We're gonna to go to window and then down to timeline. Okay, so here's our timeline. We're just gonna create, it asks you if you wanna do a video animation or a frame animation. I'm gonna to go to frame animation. I'm gonna select all my layers and then we're gonna to go to, uh, there we go, create frame animation. And then we're gonna go make frame from layers, okay? make frame from layers, and then I'm gonna set this at like a 0.2 second delay, and then check this out. I just hit play, and it builds it for me. Basically, each one of those layers now becomes a frame in my animation. I can have as many or as little as I want, and I'm gonna change my delay in between them. There we go, check that out. Looking good. And then you just go to file, export, save for web. 
And then I'm just gonna say, set this to be an animated GIF, looping forever, and then I'm gonna hit preview, and then check this out. It's actually gonna show me a, a preview here in my web browser. So it actually opened the GIF here in Chrome. You can see your file size, okay? In this case, it's almost one megabyte, so you can see it's a very large image. All your settings, but I'm actually viewing the animated GIF right here in Chrome, and that's an incredible tool because it allows me to see if everything's actually worked out the way it has, or the way I want it to. And it does look really good, so I'm gonna go back into Photoshop. Let's go ahead and save this out. There we go, we'll go to day one. All right, put a GIF, or a GIF, <laughs> the ever ensuing battle of GIF or GIF. All right. Just name it Fantasy Composite Progress. And there we go. That's literally all there is to it. So once you're done making your composite image, take an extra 30 seconds, make an animated GIF or an animated GIF out of it. And that's just another thing that you can use to promote yourself and promote your work uh, to help everyone find you and uh, to help basically move your career forward. Um, yeah, really fun thing. Plus, they're just really fun and uh, I like to be with them. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to create this Photoshop composite image completely from scratch. I wanna say a big thank you to Adobe. Thank you to Voodoo Val. Thank you to everyone in the chat who's joined us. Thank you to all of our moderators. Uh, it's been a really, really fun time. And again, we're gonna be broadcasting live uh, for the rest of the day. Let's take a look at our schedule here. So up next, we've got our uh, our Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge with Jesse. And then after that, we've got how to live stream with Paul Tranny. All righty. Well, thank you everyone. From the bottom of my heart, I wish you love and happiness and health during these times from my home to yours. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Bye, everyone.